Hey friends, it is early, too early for any videos, but I need to do one anyway, just because this is kind of one of those ad hoc videos that, that comes, I don't know if it's a rant, a personal, I don't know what category I'll put it in, you'll see, by the time you see this it will be in some category, probably in the category of doubt. <coughs> You know, there's uh, there, there's just there, there's the whenever you talk about doubt and whenever you doubt your faith, I, it, it's always hard to diagnose as to why. There's there's usually so many reasons that you don't know about, and it's kind of like this. You know, you 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 begin to have a crisis of faith and. And you can't really put your finger on it. Maybe, maybe you can say, well, this happened and then I had the crisis. Why does that always still go off? Well, maybe you can have this crisis and you are, um, you, you have something that happened that instigated it, some type of trigger. But you often don't know what those triggers are and you can't really diagnose doubt completely. For instance, let me give you a, a trigger that often you may have, but you don't really realize that this is causing or instigating or contributing to your doubt in your own faith. And that's what I'm talking about, doubt in your Christian faith. Whenever you begin to kind of get nervous about it, you, you become emotional about it, you get scared. And maybe it says something like, what if I'm wrong? Um, but there, there's this, there's this inherent trust we put in other people. I do it, you do it. You may not know it. You may think, you know, I'm an independent person. I, I only trust in what I've investigated and I understand, but that's just simply not true. We've got all kinds of people that we respect and trust. And we believe that certain people are, are good thinkers and, um, they help us that we stand on their shoulders our faith stands on the shoulders of their faith and in turn their faith stands on other people's shoulders as well we all rely upon each other we're in a community of faith here it's what everybody does i mean whatever religion whatever belief system what i mean whether it's something in science or whether it's something in religion or whether it's something at, at your work you know the the more people you have joining with you in this, and the smarter those people are, the better thinkers that they are, the more you you, you believe in um, in that which you you are uh, uh, committed to. So you have this situation where, let's say, there's somebody you've respected, and maybe you didn't even know you respected him this much, but you find out something about this person and he is someone that was a hero of your faith and you were standing on his shoulders and there's something about this person that caused you to fall off his shoulders and then suddenly your faith is shaky it's it's unstable it's uh not as uh strong as as it was before maybe you can't diagnose it that way but this is what happens oftentimes and a lot of the times it's not as if this person that you you uh, are standing on their shoulders and they suddenly leave the faith, they are no longer Christians, they come publicly and say, listen, I, I've realized that Christianity is not true and I've been duped and now I'm an atheist. Yes, that will cause that, that's one thing. And and uh, it, it, can, it can contribute to doubt. Uh, but another thing is it could just be something very small where you you have somebody you respect. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a maybe it's a scholar out there. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe it's you know somebody you just didn't even know you respected them, and stood on their shoulders until the time that you came across this way of thinking. But you come across them, and suddenly they they just do something really stupid, or they believe something really stupid. Or at least something you perceive to be really stupid. Something you perceive that isn't well thought out. And is, uh, you know, it's it's something you don't know why they could possibly be duped into believing something so foolish. 
Now, I don't know what the examples may be, but it could be something, you know, in doctrine or in theology. Maybe somebody, and, and I'm, please uh, let me, let me use this. I'll use something else that may help a little bit more, but, but maybe it's somebody, uh, becomes a charismatic and begins to, you know, say they, they speak in tongues now or something. And beforehand you're like, the good thinkers don't do that. Good thinkers understand that the charismatic gifts have ceased, or maybe it's something to where they, you are a Arminian and they become a Calvinist and you think good thinkers don't become Calvinists. You know, it's, that's what we know. And now all of a sudden, this person has gone against the grain of your perception of what contributes to good thinking. And they have changed in just one area, maybe not in the big areas, you know, like they still believe, you know, in the main things of the faith about Jesus's, who he was and, and what he did for us and our own sinfulness and the need for faith and all that. They, they're still there, but they just go off in left field or what you perceive to be left field. I mean, obviously I'm a Calvinist, so I don't think that's left field, but something you perceive to be left field and, um, and they, they fall apart there. And it just discourages you about that entire person. All of a sudden, everything that they believe is suspect in your mind because they've done something it, that you perceive to be so foolish. And the methodology with which they came to that commonality of faith, the central elements of your faith, the personal work of Jesus Christ, they got there through the same type of thinking as they're getting to this other crazy place. And now you just, you don't even know about any of it anymore because everything becomes spoiled. Let me give you an example. You're walking through the grocery store. I like to cook. I really do. I'm, I'm gonna, I don't say I'm a great cook, but I think I'm pretty good. I'm getting really, I'm getting better at it. And I understand things about cooking more and more. And you know, I go to the grocery store and I, I know where things are at. I know how to check for things, but you're going through the fruit area and I'm always getting avocados. I love avocados. It is my favorite fruit. You may call it a vegetable, whatever, but it's a fruit, but it's my favorite thing. And I eat probably on average one of those a day in something, in my sandwich or in my, just by itself, whatever. But I know how to check for avocados. I go up there and you know, I, I, there'll be somebody standing right beside me and we're both checking for avocados. And how you check for an avocado is a couple of things. If you need it that day, it needs to be, it, whenever you put pressure on it, it needs to give way a little bit. Not a tiny bit, but a little bit. A little bit more than a tiny bit. If it's only a tiny bit, it's not really ripe enough. And if it gives away too much and it is too dark, you want it to be darkened. And if it's too dark, sometimes you go up there and you grab an avocado and you squeeze it. And I mean, it just feels like there's just nothing but air in there. It just collapses. Oh, that's gross. And if you've ever cut open one of those avocados, it's terrible. You know, you just... You're just sickened by it. And avocados go bad really quickly. They're kind of like bananas. You know, the same thing with bananas. But I'm using avocados because I like avocados. And so you see somebody there and you're always seeing them at the grocery store and they know how to check for fruit. You know, they go to the bananas and do the right thing. If they need to get it that day, they look for the yellow bananas. If they need to get it, use it. You know, a week later, they get the more green bananas. Um, you know, they determine the rightness based upon the need and when they need, and they're just smart whenever it comes to choosing fruit. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, and you, you know, these people, and then all of a sudden, you know, these people who have done well with every other fruit, they're not choosing strawberries that have mold on them. They're choosing exactly what they need and they know the methodology. And then they come to the avocados and they grab one of the ones that's just terrible avocado. I mean, there's no use for it whatsoever. And they squeeze it and they say, oh, this is exactly what I need. Put it in their basket and go on. You're just like, what happened? You are my, you are my fruit buddy. I mean, we, we chose fruit together and we knew it. And you, you knew the pattern, the methodology. And then all of a sudden you're like, maybe he never knew the methodology to begin with. 
and the reasons why he was choosing the good fruit and the bananas and the strawberries and so on were was for completely different reasons that doesn't make any sense now. And so now his rationale is suspect. And you stood on his shoulders because you, while you didn't know it, he gave you confidence. Every time you were there getting fruit, he was getting fruit, and you did the same thing as him, and it made you feel good because you both knew how to choose good fruit. But now he doesn't. Your fruit buddy is gone, and you realize maybe he was a bit of a fruit idol, and he's no longer. Now, that <laughs> I like that illustration. It helps me out because um, that's sometimes what we do with our faith. Sometimes we're, we're out there and we're, we're choosing our faith and we're good thinkers and we see ourselves as good thinkers and we choose other people to associate with that are good thinkers. Not people that just choose the same things as us, but they think well. Maybe you don't like you know certain types of fruit, but these other people at least know how to do it, know how to the methodology. And suddenly their methodology is thrown out the door, therefore everything they believe is suspect. That's what happens, and it can discourage you, and it discourages me. I mean, I've had a situation, the reason why I'm doing this is this morning, you know, a discussion that I've been having and with a, with someone that I suspected to be a good thinker, and we were, we were partners in our thinking, but all of a sudden his thinking has gone so far out in left field that you're just like, well, maybe he believes the same thing I do, but he's not really on my team as far as the defense of the faith issue, the reasons for the faith. He's still on my team as far as being a Christian. You don't have to think rightly. You don't have to come to your beliefs the right way every time in order to be a Christian or the exact same way as me. But anyway, you know, so th this happens and you have a discouraging moment and then you don't know why your faith is kind of falling apart and why you're so discouraged, but you are. And it does happen that way, folks. This is so often the reason why doubt happens is because somebody out there, whether you know it or not, has changed the way you think about your own faith because of what they have done within theirs, tweaks they have made, adjustments they have made. And the confidence that you have is gone. Now, here's the point. You, 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 the reason why you were choosing that fruit to begin with is not because that other person chose it. It's because you know that this is right to do with avocados. That if you need them in five days from now, you get one that is that is harder. And if you need it today, you get one that's soft. You, you don't get rotten avocados. At least I don't know of any reason to. There may be a reason to, but I don't know about it. And so you, you, it doesn't mean that the way you came to your faith is wrong and your methodology is wrong simply because somebody else has dis exhibited some sort of irrationality in their thinking. But that's the way we think, because we want to believe in community. Part of the warrant that we have for our belief comes because other people have that belief in a like-minded way. It's just, it's just one of the contributing factors of doubt, folks. You know, it may be that sometime I go in some type of weird direction. And for those of you who maybe listen or have followed me for a long time, it'll disturb you. And I don't want you to base your faith completely upon, I know you're gonna stand on people's shoulders. I know as I stand on other shoulders, some people stand on mine. But just be, I, I probably do have something really weird that you would think, how did he go in this direction? You know, I, so many people out there that are like this, that how do they go in the direction that they go? And it discourages us. And you, you, you got to keep strong, keep the faith. That's just going to happen. It's part of life. doesn't mean everything that they believe is wrong.